Carrie Lake, 80% of those votes. So 80 to 17, those are huge numbers. If she can keep that trend up in Yavapai and elsewhere, that's good. I think in a normal country, we would say, hold on a second, maybe we need to have a different set of regulations for social media platforms now that this big, maybe we need to have less money in the system. But that conversation is not happening yet. Betsy DeVos could also be a repeat for education secretary. And Mike Pompeo no. could come back as defense secretary. No. Some no. of Trump's former GOP no. primary Don't opponents do it. who have since turned into allies are also in the mix here. The Arizona election continues to drag on and something interesting has happened on X. You remember Stephen Richer, this guy who lost his election and will no longer be our county recorder, was a very active user on X. You can see his account had 38,000 followers, 38,900 followers, and he was on it a lot. He was constantly trying to combat misinformation and all that stuff, which I actually appreciate. I appreciate the election officials coming on and trying to curtail what they believe to be disinformation. I much prefer that than having them just contact the FBI to have posts deleted. That's how this should happen. Just make your arguments. Jocelyn Benson says, you're all liars. I say, oh, we are? Why? How do you say so? She says, well, we have an FAQ on our website that explains how this is. I say, great. I love that. Thank you. Let's go read it. We pull it up here on the screen, read it, do the math. You guys help me with that. And what do we discover? We're right. Elon's right. She's wrong. She's just being manipulative with her explanation. So then they can respond to our alleged misinformation and we can show that we're right, accurate, and truthful and that she's the liar. Well, same thing is happening here. He has been all over the place on X and now after the Trump victory, the current Maricopa County recorder is gone. He deleted his account. This is a little bit concerning because we still have an open ongoing election happening right now and he up until today essentially was up talking about it, posting, responding to people, trying to explain what's happening and now he just abandons ship. So isn't that convenient? So he just deactivated his X account as as people are alleging more fraud happening to try to dispossess Kerry Lake of a victory, says count the votes and give us the results. From AZ Senator Justine Wadsick, she's a state senator from Arizona, part of the Freedom Caucus, says what's going on over here? Maricopa County recorder Stephen Richer has deleted his personal X account. The ballot drops are still at a standstill. What's going on? Deleted. Interesting, right? People wondering what is happening. Now the ABC data guru friend fell says that ballot drops are not at a standstill, okay? They're still coming in and he doesn't know why, but ABC 15's data guru, this guy who does reporting on elections, not a fan of Trump or anybody on the right side, but has access to good numbers and good data, says, as for Richer, why did Richer leave? And he was a pretty big defender of Richer, in my experience. Says, I would imagine he wants nothing to do with this app anymore. There are a lot of manipulative grifters on here. <clears throat> I wonder what that means. So we don't know what happened with Richer, but he's now gone. Here's some of the latest. These are great numbers. Now, the question is, how many ballots are left? Look at these numbers, okay? Yavapai just posted 2836 ballots, and 30 minutes ago, it just came up. Now, look at these numbers. It's a GOP stronghold, so good numbers for Carrie Lake. 1772 votes is what she netted. Would have been nice if it was 1776, you know, or 17,076, but you get the point. Carrie Lake, 80% of those votes. So 80 to 17, those are huge numbers. If she can keep that trend up in Yavapai and elsewhere, that's good. Probably Problem is in Maricopa, another big county, it's going the opposite direction, but not by much. It's more like 51 for Gallego and 49, something like that for Lake. But here you can see in Yavapai, in this one county, there's 59,000 ballots left. So if Carrie Lake takes 80% of those 59,000, what number does that cut into Gallego's lead? If that pattern continues, a lot. Probably not enough to get over the margin. Maybe it is. Our math gurus would have to tell us and spreadsheet the heck out of it, but tightening dramatically and very slow. So that was that. He's responding. He says we take a lot of time because 90% of our 3.5 million votes are by mail and they're verified manually, which is why it's taking so long. All right, in Maricopa, he says the party split of the next 230,000 ballots, this was earlier today, could be problematic for Lake. Three hours ago, says Maricopa posted 229,000 more ballots. So this is the big blue county. Maricopa County is where Phoenix is, the city of Phoenix, and we have a bunch of other smaller cities in the surrounding suburb area. A portion of these are probably election day early ballots. Here's the party breakdown. Much more down democratic and independent than the last couple of batches that were posted in the portal last night. So still favoring Republicans, but more democratic than Republican, I guess. So other batches were less so. So, you know, it's very close. Quick note, these are not being counted today. 
about the mail-in balloting problem. He says, Warren Peterson, Arizona Senate president, says, I have tried without success to shift us to the Florida model that has a Friday cutoff to drop off early ballots. Current delay is from counting the mail ballots dropped off day of and have to be signature verified. Maybe I can get enough support now to get it across the finish line so we can stop with this nonsense. Says, so there's no failure. It's all just normal times, right? It's normal counting. And they told us it could take 10 to 13 days. And so that's where we're at. Carrie Lake is posting this. Says, the most important thing you can be doing the next few days, she dropped this bright and early this morning, is helping TP Action cure these ballots and make sure every vote counts in Arizona. And you can even do this over the phone if you don't live in our state. So if you're out there and you want to help Arizona, help Carrie Lake win in Arizona, give a hand. We also have Harmeet Dillon, who is in Arizona, circling the wagon. Says, Arizona update. There are lawyers and trained observers monitoring the tabulation of ballots, duplicating, and the adjudication until we're done. I'm in constant touch with Carrie's lawyers and supporters about this, and we are watching every ballot drop, as is the Arizona GOP and Gina Swoboda. So they're counting. It's going slowly. There's a ton of people here keeping their eyes on it. Turning Point Pack, also Tyler Bower over there, who is the Arizona COO, seventh generation Arizona, seventh, whoa, TP Action. He is saying that Turning Point also just filed an FEC complaint against the, quote, Republicans for Harris campaign in Arizona. Says not only was their campaign an embarrassing failure, we believe they did not make proper disclosures to the general public. And so they dropped this. This is from their attorney saying, we believe we've got important work to expose dark money backers and bad entities, a lot of people manipulating Arizonans for far too long. And so interesting filing there. We also saw this was an interesting comment from Ryan L. Heath. And he's an attorney who's here in Arizona. And we've met, he's a very nice guy. He had an interesting theory here, says they're potentially swapping out ballots here, right? And this is being posted to the election integrity community. Not saying that they are doing that or what, but there are some hints that maybe he says there is a possibility of that. Here's his explanation. He says, the longer it takes, the longer Maricopa County has to illegally erase the already tabulated ballots is the more time they have, right? The longer it takes, the more time they have to make changes. Here's a sworn affidavit from MC's election director admitting that this is happening right now. And here's a link to the MC's chair's board of supervisors, Bill Gates admitting in 2022 that you can't do that, that that's illegal. And he went to Harvard. So he knows what he's saying when he admits the practice is unlawful. So for the record, they did this for 44 vote centers following the 2022 general election and at a nearly dozen vote centers following 2024. Here's why this matters. None of the folks that cast ballots at the impacted vote centers can be sure their votes were counted as originally cast and it's entirely possible for actors within the MC to swap the ballots out and change the results. Possible. Not saying it's happening, but it's possible. Given that MC makes up a 60% of Arizona's voting population, this is a pretty big deal. All right, so on the cables, they don't like it when attorneys are investigating the Arizona shenanigans and so Van Jones wants people to be silenced. Here's what he said. There are two sets of laws and rulings we have to deal with. The Supreme Court has allowed this unlimited money dumping in. And then, you know, there are legal protections that allow these companies to do what they want to and do what they will. I think in a normal country, we would say, hold on a second. Maybe we need to have a different set of regulations for social media platforms now that this big. Maybe we need to have less money in the system. But that conversation is not happening yet. I mean, oh, that that was a, so what are they going to censor everybody harder this time? Here was a big question about the Senate. Carrie Lake, we want to send to the Senate so that we have a nice Senate margin because we have a bunch of squishy Republicans in the Senate, thinking of people like Susan Collins and others, who I believe is still in the Senate. And Romney, okay, these individuals, who I think is also still in the Senate, right? Or he's retiring. I don't remember. But the point is, we want good Republican conservatives in the Senate. And Senator Thune is saying Trump should stay out of his business. Is President-elect Trump involved in, does he have a chosen preference in the Senate? Do you know, Senator? And will that come into play? Well, I don't know that he does um, stay in regular contact uh, with him and with his team. And, you know, obviously, if he wants to, he could exert a considerable amount of influence on that. But honestly, I think my preference would be, and I think it's probably in his best interest, to stay out of that. These uh, Senate secret ballot elections are probably best left to senators, and he's got to work with all of us when it's all said and done. But whatever he decides to do, that's going to be his prerogative, as we know. And how but many I think others we gotta, are? We're going to have that election next Wednesday, and we'll have a new leader. All right. I sure hope Trump doesn't stay out of it because we want want a nice, accommodating, and friendly Senate. We also want a good cabinet. Let's see what some of the rumored names are who might make up Trump's incoming administration. Good morning, guys. President-elect Donald Trump is already in the process of meeting with his transition team. Of course he is. No breaks, baby. He will fill his next no breaks on this train. So here's a look at some of the names being floated for top cabinet positions. Ben Carson could be back for another term as Secretary of Housing 
and urban okay, development. Okay, what's up, Ben? Betsy DeVos could also be a repeat for Education Secretary, and Mike Pompeo no. could come back as Defense no. Secretary. Some no. of Trump's former GOP no. primary Don't opponents who have since turned into allies are also in the mix here, including North okay, Dakota the rest Governor of the list Doug Burgum, who has been mentioned as a potential pick for Interior or Energy Secretary. Florida Senator Marco Rubio, who could be in the running for Secretary of State, and Robert F. Kennedy Jr. as Agriculture or Secretary of Health and Human Services. Yes, Health and Rubio Human Services. And Kennedy are already weighing in on their potential future plans. Listen. I'm in the Senate. I have an opportunity to serve there, and he's going to need people in the Senate to help carry that agenda. But maybe that's the best place for me to serve. Maybe there's some other capacity. I really don't know because we just came from that victory. In some categories of workers, there are entire departments like the nutrition departments at FDA that have to go, that are not doing their job to eliminate the agencies as long as it requires congressional approval. I wouldn't be doing that. But I can get the corruption out of the agencies. Senate Republicans are planning to work with the Trump team to begin cabinet nominee confirmation hearings before the inauguration on January 20th, 2025. All right. So interesting list there. Mike Pompeo. Yikes. Didn't he want Trump prosecuted for his classified documents garbage? I remember playing a clip here of him. He's like, well, classified documents are very serious, even for a president. You know, Trump, no one's above the law. Like what, Mike? He's the president. They're his documents. You know that. Stop it, Mike. And then didn't he try to like drive Tucker Carlson off a bridge or something one time? Like, don't you dare release anything or I'm cut your brakes. Tucker's like, what? Just reporting the news here, bro. No to Mike Pompeo, but the rest of the list looks good.